this week is a little different because I'm right here with the goddess that is going to teach us something today. We are in Williamsburg, Brooklyn at the Milk Bar Commissary. We are with this incredible human who is like the behind the scenes magician of all the things you know and love about Milk Bar. This is the incredible Ganji. She's been at Milk Bar for over four years. She runs the entire kitchen here, which means all the birthday cakes and the chocolate birthday cakes and the compost cookie pies and the cereal milk soft serve and like, I mean that's like so <laughs> selling the prep list short. Everything is all under her reign. Um, she is gonna teach us something really incredible and delicious and something tells me to learn a lot more along the way. But also one of her many touts to fame is she is a chopped baking championship champion. Like, like cue the dollar bills falling from the sky. She is an incredible chef when it comes to all things sweet, all things savory, and she's proved it time and time again. I mean, when you want chopped, I thought the Milk Bar universe was going to basically explode with pride. But anyways, y'all, this is Ganji, and today she's gonna teach us something. Yeah. Ganji, what are we learning today? What okay. are you gonna teach us? So today we're gonna do very simple, traditional Albanian quick breakfast. Um, okay, Albanian. Why Albanian? Because I'm Albanian, uh, and it's what I grew up eating, and it's so yummy. Everyone needs to learn how to make it, and make it at home, enjoy it. Okay, what is the technical name for this dish? So technically, it's called piperka mejiz, which literally translates to peppers and ricotta cheese. So simple, you know what's in it. Those are your two main ingredients. And who's mad at peppers and ricotta cheese? I'm not mad at peppers no. and ricotta cheese. Um, and you said traditional breakfast? Yes, so very much so, like Albanian cuisine is like very Mediterranean, very much simple. Um, so yeah, I grew up eating this, I'm sure a lot of Albanian people grew up eating this. Peppers and cheese, y'all, we're about to get down. <laughs> okay, Ganji, where do we start? Okay, so we start off with just whole red bell peppers that we're gonna just roast them whole in the oven. Um, if you have a burner, um, uh, what do you call oh, it? Oh, broiler? Broiler. Um, throw them in there for like 20 minutes, or you can just roast them in the oven at 400 for like 20 minutes. Can they, do they have to be red? Can they be other colors? Um, they can, it just won't be the same flavor as the red ones. We want to go with the red flavor. The red has more flavor, or yeah. different, distinct flavor. Yeah, it's like green, you can do green bell peppers, but they're more, I don't know, they're more like... They're yeah. different, they yeah. have an earthiness to them yeah. that is not the same. These are like Boys. a little bit more sweet, but not really. Okay, so yeah. these are gonna go in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes. 20 to 30 minutes until they're blackened. TV uh, magic. <laughs> they went into the oven. Oh my gosh! They're on a huge sheep pan and we lost two of them. That's brilliant! She's a magician, y'all, I told you. Okay, so this is what we're looking for, and they're kind of, you can see them sort of like, um, not crispy, but like there is a definitive skin yeah. on top that's charred, and you can kind of feel the yeah. meat of the pepper below. They've deflated. Uh, there's nothing on the sheet tray. It's no. literally just the pepper and the parchment. Yeah, no oil, no need to spray anything, just parchment and peppers. And yeah, we're looking for underneath the skin, the meat of the actual pepper to be very soft. And so you're only gonna get that if you char it this, this much. Got it, so 400 degrees, 20 to 30 minutes. We're trying to get char on the skin knowing that it's really just to tenderize yeah. the pepper flesh. And if we have our broiler, when do we know to broil? Or um, you just broil the whole time? No, we, you we just light broil it the whole time and then you turn it, you turn it as, as you need to. I see. Could well, you do this? You could grill it. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Either so way. you could take this in any direction. Yeah. Classic, most delicious with the red bell pepper. Yeah. You could do it in the oven, you could do it with the broiler twisting it, you could grill it. Yeah. Which could be nice, smoky, charcoal. Yeah. Different. Different, but Different. still good. Um, okay. Cool. So once you're at this point, you want to just take all that skin off and all of the seeds, anything on the inside of the pepper, um, should be really easy. Um, because it's so charred that oh, it almost like just like falls off. Totally, it's like yeah. opening a little package. Yeah. 
And how long do you let the peppers cool before you start the peel process? I mean, you could do this in advance if you want to. Like, we always have just random roasted peppers at home, but like maybe 20 minutes until it's not like really hot because the inside of the pepper will be really, really hot. I love the like, we just have random roasted peppers. <laughs> throw your hair back and say it. This, can I just say for a moment, is a little bit like being in grade school. Did you ever do that thing where you took like Elmer's glue and let it dry on the surface or on your skin? Yeah. And then you were like if peeling you... it back and feel like that there's something, uh, I don't even know that there's a term for it. It's like the ASMR version of our nostalgic childhood. Yeah, <laughs> if you like peeling things or like Definitely ASMR to like peel off the entire skin. It's like, it pleases me in a way in which I can't explain. So then you kind of like poke your finger in and pull out the big core of seeds. Yeah, you don't really want a lot of seeds. There's gonna be one or two, it's fine, but the big like, uh, what is this? Uh, we'll call it the nub. Core. The core. nub, I like that. The nub? The uh, pepper nub. That's out of the way. Um, and why do we not want the rest of the seeds in the mix? Um, they're just not that great for like eating, I don't think. Texturally, yeah. they're not pleasing. Uh, is there anything clever we can do with the skin and the nub, the seed nub? Or is it just like compose it, compost it? Usually we just get rid of it, but you feed it to the chickens. I know, <laughs> feed it to the chickens. I want chicken. to like puree it and know what happens. <laughs> like, can I make a pepper oil after, oh, over what's left over? Well, okay, you get this great like pepper juice from roasting it, which I'm sure is like an expensive one. Which you gotta know is the oils and the waters. Okay, so you also said at home you just have a ton of just random roasted peppers, beautifully left over, which I love. Um, and you're like home, like family runs deep. You have like deep Albanian roots. Yeah. I have once heard on the streets of Milk Bar that you have 41 first cousins in Staten Island. 41 first cousins throughout, like, the world, but 41 first cousins. Isn't that crazy? How's that even possible? How many siblings do your parents have? I think I have 10 first cousins, really? which I thought was, like, a lot of people to, to, like, keep tabs on. I feel like that's more normal to have 10 cousins than 40, but my dad is one of nine, my mom's one of six. And so it's just they like a baby all pepper. have like four or five kids each. So I think like the oldest is like 50 or like 40, and then the youngest is like two, three. So it's just like a wide array of us. And how do you? All, I freaking love it. It's like so you us. always know there's a home that has roasted peppers. That's for sure. No oh, matter where you go. Roasted. How do you like keep in touch with them and keep tabs on them? I mean, Facebook is like really good for that, you know, or like just calling them every now and then. I mean, when you can, you try to visit. Um, summertime is usually the time when everyone will try to get together okay. because um, you know, you go to Albania and like everyone's there, sort of like at a random time. Um, it's, it's like a family day. reunion yeah. happens in Albania. In yeah. Only not this summer, I bet. Not this summer, but still, hopefully in the future. Um, okay, when your Chopped episode aired, did you, did the Food Network call and go, who of you has 41 first cousins because <laughs> the tune-in rate like almost broke the television network? I don't know. I don't, did they freak out? I mean, I'm sure they did. All my cousins were like, went ham. All I got was like videos of like my family watching it and being like, why are you won? And I was like, it still feels like I didn't do that and it didn't happen because it was all a dream. Yeah, it was all a dream. I mean, because it happens in a thing like this yeah. where you're like, I don't know, I was hanging out with one person and then all of a sudden yeah. they got pushed out into the world. It was just like this crazy intense day that I was like, holy crap, that happened. And then I went home and then it aired on TV and then I was like, I, that wasn't a dream. Like, like months happened. later. Yeah, months later. I had to keep the secret for so long. That's I didn't really tell my team, no one. They all, I made them all watch live with everyone, which was really fun. Did you just play it cool? Were they like, did you win or not? You're like, oh, you'll see. Have yeah. a roasted red pepper. I guess. You'll see. Who knows? Say la vie. Okay, we have our gorgeous roasted peppers. Yeah. They have been skinned and denubbed. And we're going to find something clever to do over here because I'm very excited about it. This also looks like the gourmet roasted red pepper <laughs> that you could unfortunately spend a ton of money on at like the specialty food store. 
It's yeah. that simple. It's yeah, just it's that easy. And like, you can buy roasted red peppers in a jar, but I feel like you said like the difference in flavor and texture really comes if you just make it on your own. And it's so easy that just get a whole bunch of peppers, roast them, and you and you have them. Okay, I know I asked about green and, and yellow and orange and like the other types of bell peppers. If you're like a crazy spice hound or you are like a crazy pepper grower and you have like banana peppers and jalapeno peppers and ghost peppers, like it's like take it for a spin. Who knows what you'll find? I mean, I guess this is what, what's going to happen now is we see what other people do with yeah. this recipe. You're right. That's like, that's, that's on you, Bake Club. You better bring the thunder because she's <laughs> going to be watching. And I imagine in the same way, though we haven't got to it, it's also a matter of like, how do you play off of, how do you learn the basics? And then how do you play off of a different pepper and a different yeah. cheese to make that vision, that flavor story come to yeah. life? Yeah, uh, the options are endless, right? Because we're just going to do this one traditional way and then we can go anywhere from here. Oh my God. Okay, so talk us through the tradition of it. We so, take our roasted red peppers. We got the roasted red peppers, so that's our main ingredient. It's done. Um, you want to get whole milk ricotta cheese. Um, I guess you can do a variety. I mean, I've seen my family do cream cheese if we don't have ricotta cheese, mm. so that's a definite sub, but traditionally ricotta. Um, and then for spices, just salt, pepper, and you have to have paprika. Why paprika? Um, because it just plays off of the pepper. Um, got it. it. makes it even more of an intense pepper flavor, and got it makes it. it really, really pretty pink. It like underlines, it like, it's the way that you like embolden or underline yeah. something when yeah. you're super excited. Yeah. And color. And the color is so pretty. It's like this nice pink. And I imagine that for like, for a bait club fan that is maybe not in the dairy department, you could do like an alternative cheese and vegan oh, yeah. cheese and nut milk cheese. You could totally take this. Yeah, this can absolutely be vegan. I mean, the only dairy product we have here is the ricotta cheese. So if you sub that, you got it. Yeah. So whatever, would, whatever you would put in place of a ricotta or a yeah. cream cheese is really good. So we're looking for something that has a depth of flavor, but that's sturdy enough that yeah. it's not like, it, it's not the type of cheese that like shreds and melts necessarily. Yeah, it should be like able to be put on a piece of toast and like retain its shape. Also, sorry, Bake Club, you know how to make ricotta cheese because we made that. So oh, take yeah. it back to the archives <laughs> and get after it and get Full down with circle. it. Full circle. Full circle. Okay, talk me through it. What, what, how do I measure? Is it instinct? Are there exact quantities of salt and pepper and paprika to your ricotta? So, Give it to me. I would say salt, pepper to taste, because if this is really salty, then you don't add a lot of salt. Mm -hmm. But for the paprika, you want to do like a half teaspoon per pepper, I guess. Got it. Um, and all of these peppers are created equal when we say half a teaspoon. <laughs> Oops, wait, no, they were in the oven. You never saw that. TV magic. Uh, okay, so half a teaspoon per bell pepper. Yeah, and I would say, what, what would you say, like a cup? Yes. Right? Yeah. Of what this ends up being once it's all folded up? Yeah. Yeah, a cup. Yeah. So if you're gonna have one or two um, peppers, you want like a full teaspoon to two of paprika. Got it. Um, yeah, so you wanna start? Yeah. Okay. So we have, we've already started. <laughs> our pan's really hot, so it's ready to go. Um, and we're just gonna slice up the, the red pepper so that you get a nice little bite. It's not just like a chunk of pepper in here. Got it, so you're sort of shredding it down into manageable pieces, because what you cut down to here is part of the finished product. It's not gonna break down anymore. Yeah, and it's just rough chop, you know, nothing crazy. You don't want anything bigger than that. Um, but yes, you want it to be sort of E easily spoonable. Got it. And we're gonna just throw this on the pan. Got it. And this is just like, you know, Bay Club, it's like the standard uh, medium body or medium uh, uh, medium size, um, heavy bottom saucepan, the one that we use for almost everything. You heat it up, there's no oil in it at this point. Right. It's just those beautiful peppers that have their own juices that came out. Yeah. Um, you wanna uh, cook the juice a little bit just so it doesn't splatter with the oil. Got it. But, oh, I see. So oil doesn't go in first, peppers go in first to reduce the remaining liquid. Yeah. Got so it. it's not super like tacked with the oil. Got so it. at this point, I don't hear it as much. So I'm going to just throw in about mm, a teaspoon of oil. Yes. And you can do whatever oil you want. It's pretty much a neutral oil right now, but 
I don't see why you wouldn't want to use like an olive oil or anything like that um, to give it a little flavor, but neutral, whatever you have is good. Got it. Just think about the flavor of oil and how it's going to impart itself into the peppers and the cheese that you're choosing. Yeah, I'm going to put a little more oil. Got it. Um, and how do you know when you've got a good amount of oil? It's like the thinnest, thinnest, thinnest layer of oil at the bottom. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to totally get rid of the oil. You want a little bit of the oil because the pepper, the spices are going to flavor the oil and the oil will flavor the ricotta. I see. So can I we, want, can we, can you see this? Can you see what's in the pan? Yeah, she can. <laughs> so they're becoming like a tad more mushy. Isn't the right way? Isn't the right word? Because yeah. mushy has a negative connotation. A little bit more soft, a little bit more wilted, maybe the tiniest bit of color because of the direct heat. Yeah. Okay, got it. So salt, pep. I'm just gonna do a little bit of salt right now, and then we'll, we'll check it later after the cheese. And then you go a little bit heavier with the paprika. I guess you wanna just coat everything in your pan a little nice and thick. It's more than you think from a covering of the surface standpoint. But these peppers have had no seasoning on them at all up until yeah. this point. So even now, my pan's really hot and a lot of the oil is sort of like dissipating, so I'm gonna add a lot more. Okay. So you want to keep a thin layer of liquid in the bottom of your saucepan yeah. at all times. And you can see the oil is very like bright already from the yes. paprika. That's what you want. Got so it. it smells just like peppers like times 10 right now, right? Totally. It's, it's like, like someone times. turned up the volume yeah. in the, the odor department. And you can almost see the paprika starting to toast, right? Yeah. You want the paprika to cook along with the oil and the peppers. Got it. And if it coats the bottom of the pan, I think it's good. That's okay, fine. perfect. So at this point, will you toss? Will you toss it over there so they can see? Yeah. Glory. It looks like yeah, it does. It looks like there's like crazy loud pepper oil at the bottom. It certainly smells like that. Yeah, it is like you're making like a pepper oil, I guess. Got sense. it. So now, I let that cook just for like a minute. Like, so as you said, you just want to get the oil ready, and then I'm gonna add in, mm, I'd say like half a cup to a cup. Of ricotta. When I was younger, I added a lot more because this was what I wanted. But now I'm like, okay, this, like, you yes. gotta be a little bit more realistic. You appreciate the balance of yes. the two. So still on heat. It's on kind of like a medium heat. It's not hot. It's not low. You add the ricotta in while it's still on heat. It's pretty freaking gorgeous. So pretty, right? That color. And then you want the ricotta to like cook all the way. No lumps of white. And then this is it. So I'm just gonna cook it until the ricotta gets really well mixed and it's warm. It starts to boil a little bit, but then literally guys, like that's, that's it. That's all she wrote. Oh. Do you make this in advance? Like is it one of those things that gets better when it sits or is it one of those things that you make a la minute or like the moment that you wanna serve it, five minutes before the moment that you wanna serve it, you make it? A la minute, really. It's best hot but no one's mad at cold ricotta cheese, you know? If you show it to the breakfast table, it's you're still, still good. here for it. Yeah, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, how nice and easy and how good does it smell? I mean, it I'm, smells so yummy. I'm just waiting for you to taste it, season it, and for someone to tell us <laughs> we're done filming so we can eat. I know. Uh, like unapologetic, like spill it on my porter shirt. Okay, a few other things about ganji. Um, Every time I come to the commissary, for some reason, I swear I don't come specifically when it's family meal, i.e. the time when everyone that's working in 11,000 11, square foot kitchen stops to partake in a meal together. But I swear every single time that I come, it's either set up or plate up time. I mean, this queen acts as though she is running a fine dining banquet hall because it's just, I mean, it's out there in the other room, we'd let you in, but food safety and all of that. It's just beautiful rows of plates with the silverware already set and then she starts plating in every single tray, looks exactly the same and it looks like it's made with so much love and care. And it's one of those like, one of those underbelly of working in the food service industry things where how you cook for your peers is a direct representation to 
your level of care, your level of integrity, your level of leadership, because not only are you fueling their bellies, but you're, fu you're fueling like their spirits and their souls, and how you care about that detail sets the tone for every yeah. single thing that you do. Yeah. It's together. It's so and family law is so important. I think it just like even when I started in Milwaukee, I was like, so excited when it was something a little extra special, and it just made you feel like okay, well, I just like had a really great lunch with all my friends and all my managers, and I'm just gonna kill this afternoon, and then it'll all be good. It changes your whole mindset in terms of work and just in terms of the day. It doesn't feel as heavy or as you know, intense, it just feels a little bit more like, oh, well, I can do it because I'm just going to eat this really good lunch and then we're all going to do it together, you know? And we're all going to crush it. In. We're all going to kill it. And it is also like that if you are, you know, brand new to the kitchen or maybe you're having a bad day or maybe you're like feeling down because you, you made a boo-boo, like you mismeasured something. Imagine like a moment if someone were to like put a white tablecloth over a prep table when it's time for your lunch break to be like, sit down. I prepared yeah. for you this incredible, like Mediterranean-style <laughs> delight that's based on the love and soul and spirit. That, like that, it does. It totally yeah. like resets the tone. It changes everything, and it's like a big part of milk bar culture to be like, it has to be really great. It can't just be like an average thing, or just like it doesn't matter. It has, it has to matter. So, I think that's been something that's been instilled in me since I started working here to be like. Fan is just as important as all of the cakes that we make. It's just as important. We don't do anything yeah. a little bit of the <laughs> We've had some intense family meals. Intense. And also, Thanksgiving is also... I was going to say, what is your like all-time favorite family meal preparation? Is it Thanksgiving? I mean, Thanksgiving is when it's like all year long it accumulates to Thanksgiving. It's like, what has been my favorite thing like all this time and then everyone just makes it and brings it. Famsgiving for me would be like the equivalent of today, but times however many people show up. So yeah. Famsgiving happens at Milk Bar, either before Thanksgiving or sometimes between, some sometime between November and December, which is undeniably like just our most cuckoo crazy season, because it's <laughs> yeah. the time all you are trying to eat all the desserts and share all the desserts and give all the desserts and bring all the desserts. Um, but it's basically one family meal that goes down at all of our kitchens across across the U.S. And the only rule is that you show up and you bring a dish. And your dish could be anything. anything. It could be anything. any size, any shape. It could be sweet. It could be savory. It could be anything in between. And if you show up, you don't show up empty-handed. And so what you get is this crazy snake of a line of prep tables and all of these different dishes that have little labels of what it is. Yeah. So it'd be the equivalent of basically hosting big club with, I don't know, 60, 70, 80 people. Yeah. And you get to have like a little taste of, of every single person's like favorite dish moment and it just like goes on forever. The yeah. dishes that come are legendary. Um, Mimi came on bake club and did her pineapple casserole. Yes. Um, her pineapple ribs cheddar cheese casserole, which she always brings. Like these dishes become legendary, and it is like the sweetest way to share. So, on, like so many degrees yeah. deeper than sometimes we get to go, which is yeah. so exciting. Thanksgiving. Um, you're a crazy baker. So, what was the dish that won? How do we eat this first? But okay. I have more <laughs> questions I want to ask you. Okay, so I just put it like. It's ready to go. Um, any kind of toast you want, right? Like if you're gonna make avocado toast, whatever bread you use for that, you can use for this. Or you know, baguette, whatever, whatever bread you want. Um, whatever suits you. Just pile it on, and then you always want to have a little bit of like meze around. So any finger food that you have in your fridge, so feta cheese, cucumbers, tomatoes, a little salt and vinegar on the cucumber. And that's it, and the, that's pretty much how I grew up eating breakfast. This is breakfast. Yeah. Would you ever put like a sunny side up egg on it? Oh yeah. Poached egg. Oh yeah. Any There's egg. almost like an eggs in purgatory ish vibe to this Albanian delight. Yeah. I mean, I don't feel like I want anything <laughs> for it, but it's always that like demystifying your brain when you go to breakfast. Like, I could eat all this cheese for breakfast. <laughs> no no yeah. way. Eggs for sure are a big big part of breakfast as well. And it would definitely go some scrambled eggs right. on here. I'm getting into mine because, you know, 
Uh, okay, questions for you. Yeah. Um, how cool is it to have an X in your name? I I've always so. wanted an interesting letter in my name, and I got nine letters, and they're all kind of boring, if I'm being honest. <laughs> and you have an X in your name. Yeah, I have an X. So X and H in Albanian is a G sound. And I don't know, like, I never, I guess growing up, I was a little nervous, like first day of school nerves, to be like, oh, how are they going to pronounce my name? But then I just kind of was like, okay, when are they going to pause? Because that's me. And then I'd be like, oh yeah, that's, that's me, like, no problem. Wait, they wouldn't even try to pronounce no, it? No, they'd just be like, their eyes would get really big, you know? Okay, <laughs> full pronunciation, first, middle, last of your name. Uh, Gwonja Machaleta. I know, right? So the <laughs> LL so also become... A CH? Oh, the Q is a CH. So MAQ is a CH sound, like machaletta. Got it. No. Oh, and the L's just don't, they're not as round of L's. Yeah. Yeah. So interesting, right? Because it's like, for me, however you can pronounce my name is fine. Like, I'll always say Gwonja, and then if, however you can say it, I'm like, I, I get you, you know, like, it's hard to pronounce, like, it's very hard, so. Okay, this whole time I've been calling you Ganji, and it's... I, I've had like 10 different names growing up, because it's just a matter of how this person can pronounce my name. Yeah. I was thinking of you on my way over here, because I was like, I want to ask her so bad what it's like to have an ex in her name, because that is just <laughs> so cool. And then I was laughing, because I was like, I'm confident that no one pronounces her last name wrong, and all along, it's your first name. <laughs> well, I was thinking about it. My last name is is very easy by comparison, but but no one ever pronounces it properly. And I always think about it in terms of like, what would my no no like? What would my dad's dad that's Italian that you know whose like name it is being passed down like? He would always 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 um, not correct people in a demeaning way. But he'd just be like, come say it with me. Yeah. Tozi, tozi, and I'm like, no one ever says it's Christina Tozi, right? Like it's never that. And the S is a Z and blah, yeah. blah 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 blah. And you just get to the point where you're like, it's totally, you can call me, like, yeah. you can say it as an ass, you can say it as, like, whatever it is, I get you, I know what you're, how, how it's going, but it's funny how that lineage works and then yeah. what becomes your name or your nickname yeah. becomes something that's like second nature. When you're, when you're in a different country than your name originates from, you know, it totally changes, which is, it is really funny. Yeah, if you ask my parents, they would say her name is Gwonja. <laughs> but if you ask me, I'm like, oh, yeah, Don, you're like, no. It's like phonetic. <laughs> yeah. Well, Binta on our team is the same way. Her name is spelled B-I-N-E-T-A, and so everyone's like, Benetta. Um, and she said it, and she's like, it's, like, it's, that is just the way the, intro like, the introduction is, and I'm always like, you have to, like, it's, it's, it's about how we know letters to fit together and their pronunciation, but that's also, I think, like, the, the most fun part of learning and asking yeah, for sure. Okay, my friends, it's not exactly breakfast, but we're having a little brunch. Let's do it. At the comp. Yeah. The seeded bread is key here. Oh. It's so yummy. How is this? So I mean, it's one, two, three, four, five six ingredients, really three main ingredients yeah. with spice. Yeah. I think I would just eat this with a spoon too. Mm -hmm. Like I'm almost like bread. <laughs> I mean, I'm here for bread, but you, you can. know what I mean. You can definitely just eat it with a spoon. You don't really need bread. But. What do meals look like at your house normally? Um, and how often do you cook with the fam? I mean, I cook dinner every night um, because I just like, I enjoy cooking, especially when it's you know, you're baking all day long, it's nice to be like, okay, I'm going to make something savory and I don't have to measure it, I don't have to like, you know, follow a recipe, I just go. Um, that's kind of like why I like to cook every night. But with my family, I mean, as much as I can, um, the weekends usually are like with them. Um, but I need to spend more time with my mom cooking because she has all of the, the magic gear that I need to get from her. You, yeah, you need to start You need to start taking yeah. it out of her brain. I'm There's so many like this. Albanian desserts and like, like we were talking like different type of meals that she does and then I'm like I can't do it like <laughs> she has all of the knowledge and I just like I would feel like she'd have to teach me at least 10 times before I feel confident making it you know did you feel but that you know the spirit of it right yeah. like you've eaten it so many times I know the I know what it's supposed to taste like but you know like my mom will be like oh yeah it's just peppers and ricotta and then she'll be like oh yeah and I also add 
pe uh, paprika and salt and pepper, and I'd be like, well, you didn't tell me that part. Um, I feel like a lot of moms are like that, right? You have to like get into the, ner the neuroses of their intuition, right? Like everyone has, I'm sure when you're at home cooking every night, which I also love is like bakery rehab on a daily basis yeah. that like, <laughs> it is true when you work in a professional kitchen, you go in and you have to be so freaking measured about every single detail that you need a moment where you can just bake right. or cook with no rules. No one's watching, yeah. no one's on the clock, you're not worried about all the things you're worried about when you run a huge kitchen like this. Um, but I think with everything, like even if you think about milk bars, recipes, they are all based, they're all based on recipes and new ingredients and vibes, but there's always the same intuition, right? Like we're always gonna start with like butter and some combo of sugars. We're always gonna have some sort of clear vanilla or dark vanilla. We, might always add, you know, like we have the levers that we're always going to pull. Yeah. If we want something. So I imagine it's the same thing. But I also love that because that is a good shout out of like, there is a matriarch or a patriarch or a higher level of culinary influence in your life. And you need to extract all of the wisdom and all the recipes yeah. now because that is how you bring the lineage of food and food by the way there's so much more in the depth of the line of lineage of food right like there's so much more storytelling and learning around that you gotta do it now yeah yeah now's the time maybe you should bring mom in for Thanksgiving this year I know she would she would love that she'd be like get out of the way I'm running the show <laughs> she'd be like are you in charge and I'd be like yeah and she'd be like no you're not. that's what it's like when my mom's around too it's like I'm a five-year-old again right. and I couldn't possibly do the job that I do now that's the best part about moms yeah the real bossy, the bossy earth. ones, they're the best ones. They're the ones that teach us how to be who we yeah. are. Bring it down to earth real fast. Okay, what were some of the other recipes that you thought about doing on Bake Club? Um, well, like baklava, my mom makes baklava really well. Um, we have this Albanian dish, it's called pet or pita, and it's like layers of like thin pastry. It's usually filled with spinach mm -hmm. and another thin pastry on top, and it's as big as a pizza. It's cut like a pizza, and then we eat it with homemade yogurt which again my mom has always made homemade yogurt and like we mix it with garlic and cucumbers kind of like tzatziki but very much the Albanian version of it um, it's so good but it's like one of those things that you're like this is something my mom cooks not like something I cook. you know what I mean it's kind of hard to like differentiate sometimes oh we're getting mom <laughs> to the next five big clubs big clubs don't worry about it um, you also bake the most brilliant things. This this queen over here baked. My mom made everyone face like made everyone face masks and like customized them and was like, we're wearing boring paper masks, but everyone liked their own cloth face mask. And you know, you all have heard from me before that my mom will send us care packages here as though there's not enough dessert and deliciousness <laughs> from kanji. It's still it's still like so appreciated because it's like the things that you like lollipops and stuff that you're like. It's like little Snickers bar. Need it. And then these fools made her a giant care package full of the most delicious, like she was like, what are these delicious caramel brownies? <laughs> like you blew her mind because the thing about being the person that sends care packages is kind of like if you're the person that makes everyone birthday cake, who makes you your birthday cake. When you're the person that sends everybody else care packages, who sends you to care the care package? She does. We were like, we gotta send Greta a care package. This was so crazy because it was in the beginning of you know everything happening and it was like we didn't even really like know what we were wearing with masks and then we just got these incredible like homemade masks that had like wires and they're all different. It's like Statue of Liberty. Yes. I love New York. There's a they lot of pride all over here. We literally opened it and we were like, oh my god, it felt like all of our moms sent us masks, you know? So then we were like, let's send her stuff. I know she bakes, but we're gonna just bake anyways. You blew her mind. <laughs> like the best thing to do for someone like that in your life oh. is to like game them at their own game. I think in the best way possible. It is like the beautiful <laughs> gift that keeps on giving because it raises the bar in the most beautiful way. And you have to always make sure that you take care of the caregiver, right? Yeah. You care for the caregiver. Yeah. Moms need you to cook for them too sometimes, you yes. know, but I just want to say, she would be so down with this dish. She used to always make stuffed peppers as a kid. Mm -hmm. um, I remember that was like one of her favorite things to make over the sort of like mid to late summertime. And she would be so down with this. Something tells me that this is going to be in her repertoire because it's so delicious. It's so simple. And it has, like I keep going back to it and the way that you season it with the salt and the pepper and the paprika, 
and then the inherent nature of the roasted red pepper is it's peppery, but even if you don't think you like peppers, yeah. you're gonna be down. It's not, it's not raw red bell pepper. It's got this like earthiness and this tone to it that like it keeps, it kind of is like when you roll down the window and you put your hand out while the car is going yeah. and you just go like this. Yeah. It feels like your taste buds are just on the most delicious ride. Um, it's so friendly and it feels like I'm at home with you. Yeah. Uh, in like all of the sweetest, best, most intimate ways. And it's also like the recipe that is the easiest recipe to show so up with easy. when yeah. someone's like, hey, can you bring a dish? Or, I mean, you could crush this for lunch for like yeah. hot apps, past apps, like we're just having a snacky bit together. For dinner. Breakfast for dinner is a big, big deal for me. Because it's so easy, you know, like scrambled eggs, this and whatever you have in the fridge. But yeah, this makes you makes this made me like eating peppers growing up because I was like, oh, peppers, you know, like very, very picky kid. Yes. And then that's why I would only eat the cheese. And then I was like, wait, the peppers are why the cheese tastes so good. And it just like, happened. well, it really is. Sense. It is the ricotta gives the peppers a different inherent quality than you know peppers have. Mm -hmm outright. You don't think of it as ricotta and you don't think of it as pepper when you're eating it. You think of it as a brand new creation yeah. that is like incredibly easy to fall in love <laughs> yeah. with. It's almost less like a spread in a way, but um, times 10 because it's so yummy. Uh, I cannot wait to see what Bake Club, first of all, you got to get down with the basics because you have to understand how delicious it is. But then I say like, take all the rules and challenge all the rules because you yeah. know that's what we're here for. Take it to the nth degree, and you better shout out when you get down with Bait Club because oh, no. this one's gonna be following along. So is mom. Wait, what's mom's name? Um, Barda. Barda. Yeah. Barda's also gonna be after She's you all. She wants to get eyes on all the the 41 first cousins. Ditto. You're about to get 41 new followers. That's right. <laughs> they all have Instagram, so they'll be there. Bait Club, you better show up. Ganji, hey. thank you so much thank for you. teaching us peppers and ricotta i.e. any kind of pepper and any kind of cheese, i.e. so many secrets to life, including how to care for the people that care for us most, and how to extract the most brilliant recipes from the people that shape our taste buds. Yay. We're so glad you liked it. Yay.